Maybe the coolest thing about arm wrestling is the vast array of techniques that are possible. No matter how good one technique may seem to be, there is always another technique that counters that technique, and then another technique that counters that technique, and so on. For the most part, there are no bad techniques, simply different techniques that serve a unique purpose. However, like most rules, this one definitely has an exception. Michael Todd has picked up more hate than anyone else in recent arm wrestling history. This is largely due to his choice of arm wrestling style, the notorious King's Move. Michael is accused of hanging off the table, using his body weight to win, and worst of all, he is accused of not even arm wrestling. Now this technique may look a bit strange, especially to newcomers of arm wrestling, but it actually does serve a purpose. The anchor of the king's move is pronation. Its use is to put every ounce of energy you have into cracking someone's wrist back. While it is not the most attractive, it is still theoretically the correct move in certain specific instances. If your opponent's win condition is to get his wrist bent, the king's move is technically the correct move. This is because it is the hardest possible counter in that situation, so the king's move does have a legitimate purpose. This means that Michael's king's move is only the second worst move in arm wrestling history. There is another move in arm wrestling that is far, far uglier than Michael's King's move. A move that makes even the most seasoned of arm wrestling veterans cry uncontrollably. I give you the supinated flop press. Also performed by Michael Todd. Some people don't know this, but back in the day, Michael Todd arm wrestled using a completely different technique than he does today. Believe it or not, Michael was all about inside arm wrestling. He tried everything he could do to force the match into a hook. Michael's arm power was world class, but unfortunately he didn't really train his hand and wrist in the beginning of his career, so he often ended up in the worst break arm position you've ever seen in your life, often meaning every single match. I probably don't have to explain why this move is so bad because just look at it. Nonetheless, we are going to break this move down from a technical perspective. There is one major reason this move is so terrible, and that is pronation. Pronation is the difference between the flop press we see here from Michael and the flop press we see here from Jerry Cataret. Jerry's hand and wrist is in a more pronated position, whereas Michael's hand and wrist is in a more supinated position. Pronated, supinated. Pronated, supinated. Make sense? Because of Jerry's more pronated position, he is able to attack not only John's bicep, but also his wrist flexion at the same time. If John were able to bend his own wrist, he would effectively shorten his own arm, increasing his leverage in the process. This would give him a huge advantage, but Jerry does not allow this to happen. He is pressing while maintaining pronation, and John is unable to bend his wrist. Jerry ends up winning this match in the lane that I refer to as the flop roll. Michael, on the other hand, is unable to attack his opponent's wrist flexion with his pronation because his pronation is not strong enough. This leaves Michael in a terrible position where the only thing really preventing the pin from happening is his ulnar collateral ligament not snapping in half. Which, by the way, that actually happened one time. When Michael pulled Wagner Bordelato left-handed back in the day, his ulnar collateral ligament literally snapped in half. The ulnar collateral ligament is the ligament that prevents valgus force at the elbow joint. This ligament is normally stressed during internal shoulder rotation movements. It's that thing that gets injured by baseball pitchers and Michael Todd. But the point is that this move puts a tremendous amount of pressure on both your UCL and your humerus bone. The reason Michael would get into these positions is because of the huge imbalance between his arm and his hand and wrist. 
Michael's arm was at the elite level, but his hand and wrist were lagging behind. Even if we are to compare Michael's move to someone like Todd Hutchings, who was known for his arm power, we will see that Todd often still has his pronation fully engaged. Sure, he's losing his wrist flexion, but he is still hitting somewhat outside and rolling out through his thumb, attacking his opponent's wrist. If Todd's pronation is taken away from him, his move does not work near as well. So in reality, Uncle Todd is more of a top roller than a hook puller. This technique is of course known as the legendary Todd roll. Todd roll because Todd Hutchings, not Mike Todd. Anyway, let's also take a look at Ermi's Gasparini's version of a flop press. We can see right here that while Ermi's hand may not be fully pronated, it is at least neutral. This neutral wrist position gives Ermi's access to drive sideways while still being in an outside lane. He is still technically going around Levant's power instead of going straight through it. Michael, on the other hand, is having to go straight through his opponent's power because of his lack of pronation. And this brings us to the true difference between Michael's move and the other flop wrist moves we've seen in this video. If you are flop pressing while maintaining pronation, this isn't just a desperation move. This is actually the correct technical counter in certain situations. If your opponent is using an open top roll, the pronated flop press is probably the hardest counter to that move. We can see that Jiri Cataret actually wants to use the pronated flop press from the beginning of the setup. He's even better at that move than a traditional hook, whereas the supinated flop press we see from Michael is never the correct technical option. This move does not hard counter any other technique in arm wrestling. You would never intentionally want to be in this position, and that is what makes it an inferior technique in my opinion. It's never the correct option. And on top of that, it's probably the most unhealthy option as well. Pulling in this insane position for so many years is the reason that Michael's arm is so jacked up at this point in his career. The reason that his arm wouldn't straighten or get close to his face. And also the reason his arm wouldn't really supinate or pronate correctly either. It was pretty much stuck in the middle. However, I do want to clear something up. This video may be perceived as a Michael Todd hate video. And while I do thoroughly enjoy giving people a hard time, this is not the case at all. In reality, I actually think that it's incredibly impressive Michael was able to have so much success using this move. It needs to be said that in some of the matches I showed of Michael using this crazy technique, he actually somehow ended up winning those matches because Michael is still well in it. Now, if Marcia wins this pin, he will have to do it again. He's on a running foul, and he lets go again. Bob Balza, surely selling himself now. Michael, if he can claim this, has played the advantage, and Michael Todd with the... So Michael is using the worst technique in the world, a technique that gives him a leverage disadvantage and is still beating elite level pullers. I think that speaks to how crazy strong Michael's arm was and how much determination to win he displayed. I can only imagine what kind of level he would have been at if he had been training his hand and wrist throughout his whole career. Michael's combination of brute power and his heart to win is unmatched in the sport. That being said, never do this, you'll snap your arm in half.